everyone. Um, my name is Tanila from Stride Health Management and today I'm going to be talking about myofascial sling training. So recently I've been using uh, sling training with uh, the clients that have come through with lower back issues and also for myself to improve my own lower back and SIJ stability. So basically myofascial sling training stems from the understanding that movement is basically linked from your shoulders all the way down to your hips. And this sling is made up of a, uh, a fascia which includes lats, multifidus, traps, glutes, internal and external obliques, adductors, and TA. So basically the whole understanding of sling training is that, that it creates a forced closure through specific joints depending on which type of sling you're using. And this forced closure then creates a compression and stability on each joint. So, Today I'm just going to be going through the three types of slings, an exercise that demonstrates each um, use of those slings and uh, giving you an understanding of why this is really important for women as well. Um, with women our hips are wider, so uh, with SIJ you're a lot more predisposed to instability. Um, so it's really, really important that you do use these sling training techniques as a way of compressing and stabilising these joints. And we see this a lot through pre and postnatal women who come through here as well. Here at Strive, we actually use a SOMA stability program, which uh, includes a real time ultrasound, which is an objective view as to whether they're using those smaller stability muscles first and then moving on to more functional training. So we have a really good progression there with uh, uh, starting off activating the small muscles to then using the larger muscles through functional training. So with the sling, uh, the myofascial slings, there are three different types. Um, so the first type is a posterior oblique, which is basically lats all the way down to glutes. So this is on the back. So a really good uh, exercise to start using sling training for posterior oblique is a one arm, one leg row over at the cable. So we'll come over here and have a look at this exercise. So basically all you're doing is uh, standing on one leg and extending your arm out. So by doing this, you're lengthening out your glute and your opposing lat, and then you bring that arm in so you've got a row and you're contracting through hip extension, so you're using that opposing glute. So you're stretching out, pulling back in. Stretching out, pulling back in. So the whole aim of that exercise is to use that posterior oblique, so lats through to the opposing glute. Uh, the next thing I'm going to go through is anterior oblique. So this is internal and external and TA on one side, and then activating the opposing adductor. So with this exercise, a really good one is a side lunge because you're stretching out through that adductor on the opposing side and then we're bringing our arm up into extension so we're then creating a length through the opposing internal, external and TA on the opposing side. So we're just going to go ahead here and step out with one leg and bring the opposing arm out. So creating that length through that anterior release, uh, sling. The last one uh, we're going to do today is posterior uh, through the longitudinal sling and this is creating um, a force closure through L5-S1 uh, with multivitus linking up to the sacrum. So we're going to do a, a really good one which is paddling arms on the bench. So we're going to grab our dumbbells first um, and over at the bench here, just lying on your tummy. So we want to get you back into a slight extension and we're creating paddling arms just like you're on a surfboard here but it's a really good way of activating that posterior longitudinal track, uh, sling as you're getting that rotation through uh, your back at the same time. So just reiterating the three slings again, we've got posterior oblique which is lats through the glutes and this creates a force closure through SIJ. The next one is anterior oblique, which is your adductors across to the opposing uh, obliques and TA. And this creates a force closure through pubic symphysis. And then the last one here is the posterior longitudinal, which is multifidus through the sacrum. And this creates a force closure 
uh, through L5S1. So hopefully today it's giving you a really brief understanding of sleep training. There's a whole lot of resources out there on the net if you want to take a look and hopefully it's opened you up to some new exercises.